get ready because although it's not fun to either fret or be bored, it is fun when you put them both together resulting in the fretboard because the fretboard gives you something to do which eliminates the boredom and distracts you from the stuff that like you were fretting about. So let's do it. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we did so in a prior section. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you do not necessarily need this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us our scale and chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently like eight tabs down below. We've got seven of these green example tabs, an OG orange tab, and then the practice tab. The OG orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section, it now acting as our starting point going forward, mapping out the entire fretboard, giving us our entire musical alphabet in letters, numbers, combining the letters and the numbers, having a key which help us, helps us to change the scale we want to focus in on with this green cell that will populate our worksheets to the right, giving us the notes and the scale we're focused in on, as well as the chord constructions constructed from the notes and the related scale that we're working on. In this section, we're looking at the scale of the C major scale, focusing in open position on the fretboard and the chord constructions from the notes in the C major scale, starting of course with the one chord, the C major chord, which is on the first tab, open position being defined as frets zero through three. We mapped out then the one, three, five positions on the fretboard, discussed it in detail. We then went to the four chord. Why? Because the one, four, five is going to be the major chord constructions. We mapped it out on the fretboard, discussed it in detail, then went to the five, it also being a major chord construction. Then we went back to the minors, to the two chord, which is the D minor, mapped it out on the fretboard, discussed it. Then we went to the three, also a minor chord construction, the E minor chord, mapped it out. And now we're looking at the A minor, my favorite actually, and that's where we are on the practice tab to the right. So we're on the practice tab to the right. Now, the A minor is, you could think of it as kind of the special one because when we look at the six chord, <clears throat> then you can think of it as the same modal construction that we've talked about before, meaning when we looked at, say, the two chord, the D, we can think of it as the Dorian mode if I try to make that my central position as I play it. But that's a less common mode then when you go to the sixth note of a major scale, which makes the Aeolian mode otherwise known as the minor scale. And for guitarists, a lot of people kind of learn the guitar in A minor, possibly more than C major or any other, uh, anything else generally, possibly in, in like G or, uh, or E minor are common are also scales friendly to guitarists, a little bit easier to play as the guitar is tuned to standard tuning. Not that you can't play just about any normal type of scale on the guitar, you basically can because these shapes are movable. When we say some scales are easier to play on the guitar, we're usually talking about playing them in open position, them being easier possibly in part because we're utilizing more of the open strings as they play in open position. But the beauty of the guitar in part is its symmetry. So once we learn how the shapes can be moved up the neck, we can utilize that to play just about any kind of scale or normal scale that we want on the guitar. That said, uh, the, the A minor is a very common uh, position or scale that people start uh, to learn in. So, and it's, it's my favorite kind of scale. So because the minor, unlike some of the other modes, is something in Western music that we see uh, almost as often as the major, I would like to put these modes side by side. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to hide from uh, this cell BI to uh, BH. So we get the minor or Aeolian in here and I'm going to hide that. So, and I'm also going to hide this ATs to try to squish this together a little bit, right click and hide that. So notice uh, you can see this, this is the related mode 
for for the minor. So now we have the related mode. Let's get rid of the yellow over here. And so, and then I'll make, I'll copy this and say, if I looked at it on the minor, it would be the one on the minor. And remember when we look at, at the minor, the one, four, five would be the minor notes. And they happen to be, and they're gonna end up being the same notes because this is a mode, which is the A, D, E uh, here. And then we have the uh, A, D, E here. So then I can color code this. Let's make this the same uh, green and let's make this one uh, red and then let's make this one uh, yellow. So you can look at this as we did before by thinking of the this as the sixth note of the C major scale or you can think of it as the one note of uh, the, the minor over here. So let's think about the fingering of this. The standard fingering is going to be this, and this is pretty universal. Pretty much everyone plays it this way for the most part, right? You're gonna put your pointer finger on uh, this C right here, and then you're gonna put your uh, ring finger on the A, and then you're gonna put your middle finger up on the E. And then the bottom string is going to ring out and you want this open a string also to ring out so you want the open a to ring out and that bottom e the bottom e isn't as important you don't even really need the a notice that this nice tight little shape right there actually has everything you need in it but we often want to utilize that nice bass note to put the to put the a in the bass if you play the top string you don't have to but you can but but oftentimes when you want to play a really a minor -y sounding thing you'd want you'd want to have the a as the bass note so you can mute that uh with your thumb just basically touching on it with your thumb so the only thing to to get used to this shape sometimes when you start people do this because they want to put their they want to put their middle finger this uh right there it feels natural to do that at first but you'll find that uh when when you when you put your fingers this way uh the, where you have your ring finger above the middle finger it's a little bit too tight in there it doesn't fit as nicely you'll find it's a little bit more comfortable to put when you put this finger down it's going to the string above and then this finger is right below it and that fits a lot more comfortably i think you'll find so if you're practicing this then of course i would always start by practicing putting your your pointer finger down then your middle above the the string and then uh your ring and then you could just kind of practice that while you're watching tv just to get your muscle memory so you can just put your fingers uh down on that position once you get that position it's of course it's a really comfortable position uh to be playing in and it's perfect for like hammer-ons and stuff like that which is another reason i i think it's a a really nice position you've got uh, these open notes remember all the open notes are kind of fair game when we're playing in the key of c major or you can think of the relative a minor same notes right and so now you've got your i think of that as kind of your pivot position and you can you, know, you can do hammer-ons and stuff really easily because you have a pretty strong type of uh, leveraged position here so when you play this, the normal position would be the A is going to be ringing out up top. And then you've got your E. And then your A. And then your C. And then the E down here. Then if you want to play this E up top, if you hit the E up top, fine. Because it's in, it's in, uh, it's the five. But you might want to mute that out as well. So that's going to be the standard type of position. Let's make another one of these. And I'm gonna make this this uh, yellow. And so, so once you start kind of playing around with that, then you can just like we did with all the other modes, you can make that the sixth note as you're playing in C major, right? So I can be playing. And how do you do that? I'm gonna make the C major the home, and then I'm gonna add an A as I'm kind of shuffling around here, right? So I'm. Gonna, I go from a C to an F, and then maybe I should put in my A minor, and then I go back home to the C, 
right? Because I'm starting and ending on the C and I'm just kind of adding the A minor as part of my C major and C is the thing I'm kind of... The C is what I'm, is home. Or you can make the A home and, and that way you might want to visualize it actually as the minor mode over here, the Aeolian mode, or you can think of it as you're just playing around the six and, and that's going to be easier possibly to do than it might have been when we tried to do that in some of the other modes because of, in what maybe it's just because of our ears so used to the A minor mode. So it's going to be, it might be easier to make the A, the sixth note sound like home. It, it should be easy to do as it was for some of these other modes, right? Like this one is going to be quite difficult you would <laughs> to make because the seven chords a little bit funny but so you can so then how do you do that you could just make well i'm going to play the same thing but i'm going to start with an a so then that's pretty easy to make the minor sound like basically the home uh, bass and and so and so that and then once you do that then you can start playing with the fingering in terms of what if I was to add some notes uh, to this so notice the cup let's just look at the ways you can play this right now first you could say well I could play this shape that shape in and of itself is uh, is easy to play and that's got everything I need right so if I was to mute everything else out and just play that I've got what I need that's nice to know because it's movable right if I move that up here I can mute everything out and now I've got a relative uh, like D minor to this and that, so so that's that's nice you might not need that in open position as much because it's kind of nice to ring this one out and this one out but you have that option and then you can play it like you could play it this way so i could play that thing right there and then i could reach up and add that added c up there so you could be or i could say hey i don't like my pinky reaching up like that maybe i can say i could do it this way and I can I can play this way. Now that's an interesting voicing. Uh, hold on a second. Wait a sec. What did I do? Yeah, that's an interesting voicing because the A is on the bottom. So now you've got your A on the bottom. Remember the fifth is always there will be a fifth above the A all the time unless you're playing on this string because of the difference between that string. And then you have the minor third up here. So it's an interesting voicing because it's inverted. So that is good to know because if you're kind of shuffling around. You might you might put a different voicing in there once you shuffle back to an A, right? It's just because it gives you a little bit more, a little bit of variance there. You can also play it down here. So, so this would be like your standard kind of A position uh, in an open position. But notice if I was to move that up to here and look at it as I move it up, I can say, oh, I can, look, I can play it like that because now I'm just now I'm switching up my two fingers here, and so that becomes movable. Now you can also we also said that this was movable. You can also basically say that these three notes is all you really need right so i could i could do i could do uh just just these three notes which you might not need to do an open position as much but if again if you move that up here it would be these three notes and that gives you kind of like a higher a higher uh register so so which is kind of nice if you're playing like over something else so there's a lot of different ways that you can play that let's go back to the to the standard so there we have it there and then of course you could start to remember that when we look when we look at it in terms of its 
major uh, the relative all the all the major scale or the minor scale around it then remember that because we're playing in a uh, C major or a, mi a minor however you want to think of it all these open notes are legal so we'll talk more about that later but just note if you're kind of fingering it around then of course you can experiment with lifting up your fingers so I could say okay well what if I lifted you know this finger up I would be revealing a D if I did that we'll talk about that more technically later but right now I could just say well that's that's like a legal position so I could say okay what would that sound like okay and then I could do it down I could lift this one up and say okay what if I lifted this one up and that's going to go from an A to a G. All right, that's kind of interesting. So I could say, all right, that's interesting. What if I lift this one up? Then I'm going from a C to a B, right? So I'm going to say, okay. So I'm going to lift up. All, all pretty interesting variants on 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 what you're playing so so that again is another thing that I think it's kind of nice with the a so if you kind of just mess around with that you can you can just be like I'm just lifting up my fingers right pretty comfortable to do that and then, and then you get a good feel for this position to do that the other thing that's kind of nice is you could say well I'm going to hammer on both of these maybe from I'm going from an open position hammer boom like that and I think this is a good exercise for rhythm and it also just helps your grip better and helps your aim to get these fingers down so I'm just going to try to hammer on I've got a very this is like again to me like an ideal kind of hammer on position right I'm, I'm i'm pivoting with this finger i've got all the leverage i need and then i'm just trying to do that and you could do it without even without even strumming just to get just to see if you can hit those strings and get them to ring out as you're as you're hammering on and you could so now i'm going to hammer on and i'm going to lift a string up and just do some different different a different rhythmic things and again you kind of practice your grip and it's kind of a, a pretty like a stress reliever type of thing it's better than the stress ball Should... so you could start to do that and then i uh, noticed that i this all a lot of the shapes that we're playing we can leverage with this finger over here so it's kind of fun to try to hammer on all the positions you can leveraging on that finger so notice that i have the a here and then the c looks like this i could try to hammer on these two it's a little bit more difficult but i still have my leverage finger so i can go so right i'm just kind of and then you could go to uh the 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 g's a little bit an f you could play the F like this, but I usually play it like this when I'm using this fingers. So you could try to let you could try to hammer on those fingers, right? Which is a little bit more difficult, but again, it's a good workout for your hands. Or you could try all three. But I'm really trying to hit those two. Right, and then the G is a little bit more difficult. Because I could try to play it this way and hammer on these two. And that allows me to keep in the same position. So now... Alright, 
and so that's kind of fun to do that and you can't really do it on the on the d minor because then you have to move your pivot position but you could move your finger down here it's not the not as easy to do the the e but it's pretty fun for me so i like to shuffle you could do the e minor here too which i skipped didn't i where was the e minor I don't even have to pick this finger up. You could, because I. But if I just leave it down there, I'm not strumming that. And even if I do, it's in the key anyway. So I. Can. So it's kind of a fun little thing to to play with with the with the hammer-ons. Okay, so there is that. Now, if, if I wanted to move this up, let's go down to, uh, to here, and let's say we were to move this up. So I'm going to unhide, right-click, and unhide, and then I'm going to hide. Let's go from like 11. I'll try to give as much space as I can. Right-click and hide. So now... If you, if you move this up, again, you can think of it as the sixth note of the C. And so if I'm starting here on the sixth note of the C, then I would go around the horn to the next minor chord, around the circle, so until, until I get to a D. Now, when I follow this shape up, it's a little bit tricky because you're, you're probably, this is the root note, that A, but I'm, because you're not playing that, I might not play that A. I might just play this shape would be the easiest thing to move up. So I'm going to use this note as my lead note. And I'm going to say, where, when do I hit on that string a D? So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to hit a D up here when I get to fret uh, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I can go boom. And I can play that shape. Now I'm going to try to mute everything. Like I could try to play it this way so I can still pick up the D here. And that's your, that's your normal kind of bar chord. And, and that's your standard on the, when you're starting on the second string bar chord. But you might just play it like this, which is, the, which is you know, the easiest thing to do. And mute this string with the, with the meat of this finger. And then I'm muting up here, and I'm muting the bottom one, like with my palm or your pinky. Or you can do... And do the, the full bar chord. So when you do the full bar chord, you want to you wanna mute this top string, have your finger down here, and then these two fingers, and you have to get all the way down here uh, with the bar chord. This one's actually a little bit easier to play. You have to get to that third in order for it to be a bar chord. But because you're actually fingering that third, it's pretty easy to get that one to ring out. So it's kind of a pretty easy bar chord. It's actually easier than than like the minor bar chord when you're playing up here, but because you can ring that third out. But you could just play it like that. And then I could play it with just like these three notes, right? So if I wanted to play, if I was playing it here and I moved it up to here, I could say, okay, now I'm going to go do, do, do. And I'm just going to play those three and move that up. And that's kind of nice because it's higher on the register if you're playing over something else. Or I can add this shape and then just add this note down here. So instead of playing it like this, or instead of playing it like this, I'm basically just taking apart this bar chord, right? So this bar chord is like the A bar chord up to here, taking it apart instead of me fingering this one and this one down here with the bar, I can just put my finger down here directly, right? Or I can say, instead of fingering this whole thing, these three fingers have everything I need and they're easier to finger by switching my fingering to look like that. Or I can say, okay, this, this one, this one, and this one have everything I need. So I could more easily finger that this way and just get the top of that register. All those are, are useful to know 
It's not like you- it's not like cheating, it's not like, well, you could have played the bar chord, but now you just played this three note thing down here, and so that's like, cause you're lame. That's- no, that- I mean, there's- there's reasons why it might be easier or better to play this in certain situations than the full bar chord, right? So- so, um, so I used to think it was lame, you know, because- I don't know, when I first learned, it's like, well, I'm- I'm- I swear it's cause you can't play the whole bar chord, that's why you're doing that. And it's like, well, no, it's perfectly fine to play that or that. Okay, and then if we, if we moved it up again, we would go from the D up to the E. So I can move it from here to, and I'm looking again at this string, moving it up to an E. And then again, you can play all those shapes up here as well. So whether you're playing in the key of C and using mixing in the A, you could then move this up and move it back, or if, you, if you're playing in the key of A minor, then it, or right, whatever, whatever you want to do on that. Now, it's probably better to actually look at this in terms of its minor, if you look at it as the minor, because now I'm just making that six the one, and that's kind of easier to see sometimes because now you're just looking at it as the one, four, five. So now the one, four, five. You could, uh, so that's that's a common uh, way to see it. So with all these other modes, when we played these other modes off of these other notes, we also compared it to its minor scale. We don't have to do that here because we're looking at the minor. We're looking at the minor uh, scale here because this is the relative minor of the C major chord. Okay. So that is that. So next time we'll go into it more detail, talking about it in relation to the pentatonic and major scales, which these two scales, again, you can think of them as either C major, pentatonic and major scale, or the A minor, you know, pentatonic and major scale in terms of the notes that are in it. And then we'll discuss the intervals. So let's go ahead and hide some of these cells again. So we're ready to roll next time. I'm going to roll. You can't, you got to be all tucked up and ready to roll. Uh, so we have to hide some of that stuff because the too much, my legs are flaring out over here or something. I can't roll unless we're, unless we hide, unless we tuck him, tuck those legs in. Okay.